This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learn something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. There's always a long way to do something and a faster way to do something when you're doing math inside of Excel. So let's review a long way and then look at a much faster way. I'm just going to resize column E here and double click. Here is a long way of doing math when I wanted to add up Bob's January, February, and March, whatever these are, figures. They might be sales, they might be items, whatever they might be. And that was a long way to do it. You'll get the proper answer, and there might be times when you actually want to do math using this particular method, but this is the long way around for this particular option. So let me hit Escape. Let me hit Undo to put that column back, and I need to delete those numbers. Now, as soon as I deleted those numbers, the calculations next door refer to those cells, so the zero showed up. We're not going to worry about that right now. And actually, let's just delete those right now and get them out of there, so then they won't be in our way. Now, the faster way to do math, and I'm going to do one item at a time, and then I'm going to show you progressively how really fast you can do this math. But the faster way to do math when you have cells that are adjacent or next to one another is to go to the home ribbon and on the right use this auto sum button. Or you can find that same button if you go to formulas right here. There's auto sum. It doesn't matter where you locate it. I tend to be on the home ribbon more often than I'm on the formulas, and so I tend to just click there. Now, I clicked where I want the answer. Also, there's multiple ways you can use this tool. Most of the time, though, I think the best way to do it is click where you want the answer, and then go click the auto sum button, and look what it does. It says, oh, I can pretty much guess what cells you want to use. And excuse me, I want to hit escape for just a minute, widen up the E, so what I do is more clearly visible. So auto sum, there you go. Now you can see it a lot better. So it says, you always have to start math with the equal sign. It puts the equal sign in there for you. You name your function, and the function here is the sum. And then inside of parentheses, where you see that B4 through D4, those are called arguments. So the arguments for this, what you use to create the calculation, is the range, starting on B4, don't end until you get to D4. And then what you open, you must close, so you have to close up the parentheses. So that tells the computer, go add the cells B4, C4, and D4, and give me the total. So then you just hit your Enter key, and you get the proper total. Now, if any of these numbers change, that should have been a 67 instead of the other number, it automatically adjusts, and it says, oh, okay, here's what your answer should be. Now, I'm, I'm again, doing this the long way because I want to show you something that happens. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the next line and hit the auto sum, and you see how it guessed again? It guessed properly. It said, oh, let me go to the left. I think you want 58 plus 27 plus 58. Absolutely true. So we hit enter. But now what's going to happen, back up here on the auto sum, I'm going to click the auto sum. Oh, it didn't guess properly. And let me tell you what the rules are for the auto sum button so you understand when and why it does what it does. Anytime you select the cell where you want the answer, it will always look up for two or more numbers to add together. And as soon as it found these two numbers, it said, great, I'm going to add these two numbers together to give you the answer. In these cells, every time it looked up, it only found one number, so it did what it's supposed to do, and it starts to go counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. It's going to go to the left. So when it looked up and didn't find anything, it looked left, and it found numbers. If there's nothing to the left, it'll go down, and then it'll look to the right. So Excel will always do its best guessing that it can do for you by looking up, left, down, and then to the right. But you can see that's not accurate. That's okay. See these little marching ants telling you what it's selected? As long as you have those little marching ants going on, you have what I call a magic mouse. And all you have to do is say, no, I want you, you, and you. And you simply select the range of cells that you actually want to do the calculation with. So then I go ahead and hit the Enter key, and now I have the proper answer. You would do the exact same thing over here. 
Now again, remember I told you I'm going to show you faster and faster ways to do it. This was the long way to do the math. I simply wanted you to see how Excel works so that it makes sense for you in the future. Here's a faster way to do it though. Highlight all three of the cells where you need the totals because Excel will look for a pattern and every time it'll look left and it'll find a number and it'll say that's the only consecutive way I can find to do this and so they'll all go boom and be exactly right. So we'll just go hit the auto sum and it says oh here you go there's your sum. Now let's just double click and make sure double click it says yep that's right I hit escape because I didn't want to change anything double click mm-hmm double click sure is so all three of those are accurate now. Okay, let's put column E back approximately where it was before. That might not be exactly right, but it's pretty close. Okay, oh, I know I worked hard to get those in there, but I'm going to delete these numbers because now what I want to show you is the absolute fastest way to create the totals that I just created. So, well, well let's do two, let's do two. Okay, so I'll do fast and then fastest. Okay, selecting the column that has the totals, holding my control key and putting my region one totals, selecting those as well. Clicking on the totals for second quarter and the region one totals. Now I have multiple cells selected and when I go to the auto sum, click on the auto sum, it says, oh, okay, I can do all of those because they follow the same pattern. Everything follows the same pattern so I can do the calculations very, very quickly. All right, if you've not ever done that before, let me do undo and do that one more time. So I selected all of the cells that are in the column for totals. Now I didn't do the bottom one, but I could if I wanted to, I could go all the way down there. And then you can do these totals over here. Just be consistent. Whatever you do, be consistent. And then I'll hold my control key and I'll get the region one totals for January, February, March, and April, May, and June. And then you just go click your auto sum button and it will magically populate everything. That is a fantastic feature, folks. Well, one day I said to my class, anyone know a faster way? And I have to give this gentleman in Pennsylvania credit. He taught me this trick. Let me go ahead and hit the undo. And he said, you know, Sherry, all you have to do is select the numbers that you want to add and select the cells that you want to place the totals into and click your auto sum button and it'll automatically populate because once again it knows patterns. So there's another option for you. Let me do that one more time over here. You select the numbers and the cells where you want the answers and you go hit your auto sum. Isn't that cool? Well let's go see what happens with grand totals. Let me click on grand totals and hit the auto sum. And it went left and it found a number but it's not exactly everything so I'm going to hold down my control key and click the 172 and now I have the first quarter and the second quarter totals and I have 342. Now I could repeat that process for each one of those rows but I want to show you another trick. It's going to be the same in the last three cells. So I'm going to click on the 342. Remember your autofill handle here in the bottom right hand corner? You grab that autofill handle, click hold, don't let go and you're going to drag the pattern because autofill fills patterns it's going to drag the pattern. Ooh, I don't want those lines in there though. So I'm going to hit the smart icon and I'm going to say fill it without formatting. And now, let me double click on and show you, I have the same pattern that I filled down from that top cell from doing math using the auto sum button. So I think you're going to find it very, very efficient and very, very effective when there are opportunities to use the auto sum. The only thing I have left to do on here is the projected 5% increase, but I'm not going to use the auto sum to do that. I'll do that a different way at a different time. But now I know that every single person who's out there doing math the long way, you're going to start using that auto sum and do it the fastest way possible and get the proper and correct answer. It's time for a pop quiz question. When using the auto sum button to create a sum formula, how must the formula begin? A the sum function must begin with SUM. B, the sum function must begin with equal left parentheses. C, the sum function must begin with SUM equals. D, the sum function must begin with equal SUM left parentheses.
only correct answer here is D. The sum function must begin with equal SUM left parentheses because you know the rule. You always start with an equal sign, you name the function, and then you open with left parentheses. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.